Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we've got another Chromebook to take a look at. Today it's the HP Chromebook X360 14C and this is a two-in-one so you can flip the screen around here and have it work in display mode or you can turn it into a tablet if you want. Uh, and of course you can use it just as a laptop if you choose. And we're going to be taking a closer look at this Chromebook and what makes it tick here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from HP. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Chromebook is all about. Now the review loaner that we have here has an i3 10110U uh, processor. That's a 10th generation Intel chip. It's a dual core processor. Eight gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, and Wi-Fi 6. All of the models have a 1080p 14 inch touch display here. Uh, that is because these are uh, convertibles and can turn into a tablet if you want. Uh, so really nice display here, good viewing angles on it. It's IPS. Uh, the brightness is about 250 nits or so. So not the brightest display, but for its price point, I think it's certainly adequate. Colors are good. It is a very nice looking display. Uh, very easy to read text and look at photos and that sort of thing. And 1080p on a 14 inch display here looks really good. Uh, there are prior models of this laptop. This one has the same size display, but in a smaller frame because they made the bezels here thinner and that allowed them to make a more compact package. So it's a really nice uh, feeling system overall. The weight on this one is 3.64 pounds or 1.65 kilograms. So a little on the heavier side, but that's typically what we see on one of these 14 inch devices. Battery life is pretty good though. We're seeing about 10 to 12 hours if you keep the brightness at a moderate setting and you're not pushing the system all that hard. And it used to be a very general statement to make about battery life on Chromebooks because they didn't run all that much stuff. Now you can do a lot of different things with the Chromebook, so your mileage is going to vary based on what you're doing with it. But if you're just sticking to the basics like web browsing and email, I think it's definitely doable to get 10 to 12 on this one. If you're running Android games, you're doing a lot of stuff on the Linux side of things, that of course will eat into the battery life a little bit more. Build quality feels really nice on this, a nice stiff hinge, which will keep the display in place wherever you leave it. So that's been pretty good. It also has a magnet here to uh, grip it all together when you put it back down. You do need to give it a little bit of effort, though, to get the uh, lid back open here because it does like to stick there. So it will pick up the keyboard here as you go. So you just have to hold down the keyboard deck and lift up the display. Uh, it's got aluminum on the keyboard deck along with the top of the uh, display lid here as well, but it's plastic on the bottom. You have a fingerprint reader now, which we'll demo in a few minutes for getting into your account a little bit quicker, so that's pretty nice. Uh, really good keyboard here. Uh, this one is backlit, and that's an option, so the lower end model likely won't have the backlit keyboard, but most of the other models do. And the same can be said about the fingerprint reader, which is an option on uh, some, but not all of these devices. The only sour point I have is the trackpad. It feels a little slippery, and I did find myself turning down the sensitivity in the settings a little bit to make it a little easier to control. And I think that's more of a software tweak that they can make down the road with updates and stuff, so I think that can get uh, rectified. I also like the fact that it's got upward firing speakers, because if you are using this most of the time as a laptop, You'll have very consistent sound. A lot of machines like this often have downward firing speakers, which will sound different depending on what surface they're on. Uh, this one's pretty consistent. The only problem, though, is that if you put it into display mode, uh, those speakers become downward firing speakers. So you might want to look at hooking up some headphones or going with Bluetooth audio or that sort of thing. Now, there are a number of ports on this laptop, so let's take a look at my overhead view, starting with the right side of the unit. Uh, you've got your micro SD card slot here, which you can use to augment its onboard storage. So if you want to carry some movies or music around with you, put them on the SD card and it will sit flush to the unit and give you a little more storage beyond what came with your device. Uh, the maximum internal storage you can get on this is 128 gigabytes. And again, this one's got 64. So putting one of those cards in there will give you a good boost in storage space. Over here, you've got a headphone microphone jack. There's a USB Type-C port here that's a full service port, so you can charge the laptop through this port, and you've got a power adapter included, of course, to do that. 
but you can also send video out to an external display with a USB-C to HDMI adapter, for example. It'll work with display port adapters as well. And of course, you can plug USB data devices into that port too. So nice to have a full service port there. Uh, next to it is a USB-A slot. And this looks a little different than your typical USB port because the laptop is so thin. So when you plug in a USB device, you just move this little door down a little bit to accommodate the larger plug. So we'll stick down just a little bit there, but you can have a thin laptop and a full-size USB port here with this one. Uh, by the way, this is not a fanless device. There is an intake here which will exhaust through the back. You'll want to keep that clear. Uh, but the fan doesn't come on all that often, and when it is on, it's very, very quiet. So it's a pretty silent laptop, but you definitely want to keep this off of carpet or other things that might block that airflow. Now, on the other side here, we've got another USB Type-C port. You can charge on this one, too, so you can plug the power adapter into either one. And like the other USB-C port, this is a full-service port, so you can do data and video through that one, too. Power button here, you've got a volume rocker there. And this is your webcam privacy switch here, which you can use to turn the camera off with just a flick of the switch. And right now it's in, I believe, the off position with that uh, red thing there. So right now nobody can see the camera. But I'm going to flick it back on here because I want to demo the webcam. Let's take a look at that. Now the webcam on this is 720p, nothing spectacular, but it's decent enough for conference calls and that sort of thing. And then, of course, you've got the privacy switch here. So if we enable that, it makes the camera dark. It basically turns off the video. Uh, note, though, that your audio still carries through when you have that feature enabled. So just be aware of that. Your microphone is still active, but your camera is off. And if you want to have some assurance of privacy, leaving that switch in the off position all the time might be the best way to go. You'll also see the light at, at the top here will change color. So if you turn it back on here and the camera is active, it'll be white. And when the privacy is enabled, it switches over to orange. Now we did test this with Zoom and Google Meet and it all worked just fine. It should work with just about any other conferencing provider out there as well. Some conferencing providers might have you download their Android app, which will run on this. Others will just have you use the conferencing software inside of the web browser. So you shouldn't have any trouble getting onto meetings for work or school with one of these. Now we're going to dive into its performance in just a second, but I did want to touch on the fingerprint sensor here, pardon the pun, uh, because this is kind of a new thing to Chrome OS. Now what you can't do with this is, at the moment at least, log into your account. You're still going to need your password to log in, but if you lock the screen, you can now unlock it without having to use your password. And let me show you how this works. So right now I'm logged into my account. And let's say I want to lock the screen. Maybe I walked away or shut the screen or whatever, and I'm to my lockout menu here. Uh, normally I'd have to type the password in. Now I can just rest my finger on the fingerprint sensor here, and it will put me back in. But this will not let you switch to another user and then switch back with the fingerprint. So there are some things still that will require the password entry, but it's nice to see that if you are frequently locking and unlocking your Chromebook, you can use the fingerprint sensor here to quickly get back in. This is pen compatible. We're not going to be looking at pen support today because we don't have a compatible pen to use with this, but the Universal Stylus Initiative Pens, or USI, will work with this, and they do have a magnet on the side of the laptop that you can use to hold the pen in place as well when you're walking around. And we've demoed uh, pen support and some other videos we've done about Chrome OS. It's getting there, and they do have some cool note-taking applications you can use with the pen. Uh, but it's not as complete as what you might find on other operating systems. All right, so let's take a look now and see how this performs. Remember, we've got an Intel i3 chip on board here, so it's going to give us a good amount of zippiness. Uh, we're on my AC wireless network right now, and we're just popping into the nasa.gov homepage. I can use my finger here, of course, to scroll the screen, and if you've got it in tablet mode, you can uh, flip the screen orientation. Altogether, it feels really snappy here, as I would expect it to feel for the price point, so no issues there. And we also loaded up YouTube with my 1080p 60 video here, and all seems to be doing pretty well. I did have one drop frame when it got started, but it seems like it's been able to keep up with everything just fine. So you shouldn't have any problems watching YouTube or any other uh, video service on the device here. It seems to keep up with 
just about any video that we threw at it. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, which is a benchmark test we use to measure how well laptops do on the web, we got a great score here of 199 on version 1.0 of that test and 122 on version 2.0. And that is very close to what we've seen with some other more powerful laptops out there running with i7 processors. Now, those more powerful computers will do better in other areas like gaming or other things that really stress the processor in different ways. But for the most part, for web browsing, you'll have a very smooth, snappy experience on here like you would on other higher powered Windows laptops. Now, one of the cool things about Chromebooks is that they now run Android apps and you can install those apps through the Google Play Store. And this is the same Google Play Store you might have seen on your phone or tablet. So if you've purchased an app on your phone, there's a good chance that it might work here on your Chromebook. So if you go into your past purchases, you might see a lot of stuff that you've already purchased and a lot of the games that you might want to play here, like one of my favorites, Pac-Man 256, uh, will work just fine. In fact, you can use the touch screen and even run it in tablet mode and get a huge 14-inch display in which to play. So a lot of this stuff is going to work fine. You will find, though, that some apps are not compatible with the Chromebook. And the reason likely will be the fact that this is running with an Intel processor, whereas a lot of phones and tablets are running with ARM chips. So some things just won't be there, but a lot will. And it's just a matter of playing around and seeing what might be available on the App Store. Now, one thing to keep in mind, though, is that Netflix will perform better on the browser than it will through the Netflix app. So it'll let you go in here and install the Netflix app. In fact, I've got it running right now but it doesn't run at a DRM level that allows for HD video. So what'll happen here through the Netflix app on Android running on the Chromebook, it's only going to give you standard definition or 480p, but you'll get better quality video if you log into Netflix through the Chrome browser. So my rule of thumb, especially with video apps, is go in through the browser first because you'll likely get better performance. But if you wanted to do things like download video for offline viewing through Netflix or Amazon Prime, for example, then install the app for that. Just know that you're not going to get HD quality video for the offline viewing. So one of the cool things about Chromebooks is that most of them now can run Linux. And this one does a nice job of doing that, given it's got the Intel processor inside. You enable this in your system settings. And once it is enabled, you get presented with a command line prompt here that you can use to run software and install all sorts of apps. So you got your standard command line based stuff. And if you really want to start learning Linux in a way that you can't break anything, a Chromebook is a great way to experiment because it's all containerized. It's separated from the rest of the system. You really can't break the Chromebook by experimenting with Linux. And if you happen to break your Linux installation like I did once or twice before, uh, you can just delete it and start over again and it'll put you right back where you left off. They now have a nice backup feature so you can back up your Linux install before you make major changes to it and roll back if you need to. So there's a lot of cool stuff that they've been working on here with the Linux system. And the other neat thing about it is that if you install an app that uses graphical elements here like the LibreOffice suite, you get those apps running natively on the Chromebook even when you're offline. So if you don't want to use Google Docs, for example, you can install the LibreOffice Writer here and other open source applications that might be similar. Uh, you can also do spreadsheets and all sorts of other things as well with a familiar interface. And what's nice is that all of this is running locally and all the files are saved and stored locally as well. Uh, so it's a really good platform for experimenting with open source software. And if you haven't tried this yet on your Chromebook, definitely give it a shot. Now, one advantage of having an Intel processor is that you can install Steam on the Linux installation on your Chromebook. And then any Linux compatible games in your library, you can download and run. Uh, just remember that we don't have a terribly powerful system here. Uh, so things like Shovel Knight, which we were playing a little bit earlier, uh, ran great. But other games that require a discrete GPU and other more powerful hardware components, of course, will not run as well. And at the moment, I don't believe it supports uh, game controllers through USB. I know they're trying to add USB support for the Linux side of the system here. So that'll come in the near future. But it is pretty cool to be able to install Steam on a Chromebook and run and load games up natively that you have in your library. But I have had good luck running game streaming services and apps on Chromebooks. Right now we're connected to GeForce Now, 
uh, which lets you stream some of your Steam games over the internet through their servers. And this works through a WebRTC app, so it runs natively on the Chrome web browser, and I'm able to connect up my Bluetooth game controllers with it. This works pretty nicely. Uh, Google Stadia works really nicely with these as well. And then for in-home game streaming, I found that the Rainway app works really nicely too, because it also works through the browser. But we did test out Steam Link via its Android app, and that one worked okay as well. So there are some good options here for streaming games, and if you've got a decent Wi-Fi signal here, you should have a pretty good experience overall. Now, all Chromebooks come with an end of support date where they will no longer receive any software or security updates. The date on this one is June of 2028. So at the time I'm recording this video, it's just under eight years, which is a good length of time. They've been extending these dates out further and further as new models come out, which is good because initially the support dates were not all that long. Now they're getting longer here on the newer models. But just be aware that if you're watching this video in 2025 and looking at buying this used, you're only gonna get about two and a half or three years of updates before it will stop getting any support. It'll still work, it just won't get anything new uh, delivered down to it over the Google software updater. But altogether, I think it's a great Chromebook. It's got a uh, decent performance for the price point. Everything that we were throwing at it, like the Linux applications, were working very quickly without any real lag or delay. I was very pleased with its performance, even on basic web browsing as well. And I think altogether, it's a good value for someone looking for a mid-range Chromebook. That's going to do it for now. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.